G'day viewers. So last year we um, identified the Scottish shearing sword and introduced the world to the English alehouse dagger. Well, we've got a new weapon to uh, introduce you to, and that is the English buckler. Now, surely, Paul, you say, uh, the English just use little 12 inch round bucklers like everybody else. And in fact, they did. Um, we have pictures of them. And John Stowe tells us so. Um, he says, The ancient English fight of sword and buckler was only had in use, the bucklers then being but a foot broad with a pike of four or five inches long. But he goes on to say that that changed. About the 12th or 13th year of Queen Elizabeth, then they began to make them a full half L broad with sharp pikes 10 or 12 inches long, wherewith they meant either to break the swords of their enemies if hit upon the pike, or else to suddenly run in within them and stab, and thrust their buckler with the pike into the face, arms, or body of their adversary. Every haberdasher then sold bucklers. So Stowe dates this change in buckler design to about 1570, um, but it seems to have probably happened earlier than that. Um, we have a royal proclamation from 1557 that says, and for the accomplishment of their naughty purposes and quarrels, have bucklers with long pikes in them, contrary to the ancient usage of this realm and the laws and statutes of the same. And these were then attempted to be outlawed. Now in 1558, Stephen Perlin wrote, and it is to be noted that the servants carry pointed bucklers. Um, and as well as that, we have plenty of actual examples of these things uh, from the first half of the 16th century, as we'll see a little later in the video. So why did the English change the design of their bucklers? Well, if we look at a little round buckler like this, this is my little 12 inch one, I've had this for decades, um, and I love it, it's fantastic. Okay, so for doing things like 133, where you want to be able to maneuver your hand around, um, it moves really nicely, really easily, and is a really nice buckler. And for doing something like uh, a bolognese side sword, where out there but you do want some maneuverability again it's a really nice size and shape and very very nice but when you use it in conjunction with a basket hilt it is and always has been a bit crap okay um, so one of the major problems hopefully you can see is that if you cut close to the edge of the buckler as you should the basket will bang into your own fingers okay which is deeply unpleasant Okay, and if you leave enough room so that you don't bang into your own fingers, that leaves a significant gap and people will kind of cut at your arm and, and onto your wrist and that kind of thing. Um, and the edge still, the basket kind of fouls on the edge unless you, you stick it really, really flat on which exposes the inside of your wrist. So even though I've been using this combination for 20 years, it's never been very satisfactory. So the first thing the English did is to make their bucklers bigger. Um, how big? Well, how says half an L, which is 22 inches across, which is truly enormous. I haven't found any extant examples that big, but I have found several surviving ones which are 18 inches. So what's an 18-inch 18 18 inch buckler look like? Well, this is 17 and a half, okay? And as you can see, it's enormous. It's a huge barn war of thing. And certainly, I'm not gonna bang into my own fingers anymore with one of these. But 15 inches is probably a little bit more typical. Now, this certainly solves the problem of accidentally hitting your own hands with your basket, 
but it's still not entirely satisfactory because you'll still foul your basket on the edge of the buckler as you cut. Um, so it's an improvement, but it's not where the English stopped. In addition to changing the size, they also changed the shape by making them um, concave. So this kind of shape. Now, this has nothing to do with funneling thrusts into the center as I've seen some people suggest. Okay, this is purely about making a space for the basket to pass behind the edge of the buckler. So with one of these, I can now swing my buckler close to the edge, all the way around the buckler, and by flaring it out, I now have space for the basket. Now, I say English, um, there's actually good evidence that the Welsh first came up with this particular innovation. Um, we have uh, medieval Welsh bucklers, so this one is from the 15th century. Which were large and flat, as you would expect. Um, but in the first half of the 16th century, they started making them in this kind of shape. So that bit seems to have been a Welsh innovation. Um, but nonetheless, it's a really, really good idea. Okay, it certainly solves the problem of hitting your own hands and exposing your own forearm. I can now protect my forearm behind my buckler the way that I want to. But there are consequences. So with a normal little flat buckler, I will hold it angled out a little bit like that. Okay, that way the face of the buckle closes off as much of that line as possible. I can roll it over in order to close off the other line. Um, this provides space for my sword to pass through. And probably most importantly at all, of all is if somebody gets too close to me, I can quickly punch the edge of my buckler into their face. So Degrassi calls a strike to somebody's nose the moustache. Um, and so this is a, a very, effective um, offensive weapon as well as a defensive one. With an English buckler, however, um, I have to hold it in a completely different way. I don't want to give it even the slightest angle because it's already flared out and as soon as I angle it anyway, that exposes my hand to immediate camera again. So that's bad. It's got to be in a simple straight hammer grip, just straightforward, and it can't really move from there. Okay? Um, the other really profound change that this makes in the way you use it is that, as it stands, this has no offensive capability, okay? If I, even if I could flip it side on, okay, my edge is no longer in line with my wrist or my hand, so I can't really punch people in the face anymore. I'm gonna slap them on the forehead, I guess. But I've lost that devastating offensive capability um, that the flat buckler has. So to overcome that problem, the English added the 12 inch pike. So uh, this is a photograph of uh, an extant example. Um, the, the bit of the internet I got this off says it's from the Museum of London. The Museum of London disagrees. They say it's not there. So if anybody actually knows where this is from, I'd be really interested to know. Um, but here it is. And here is a reproduction of it, okay? So it flares out, and now I can cut close to the buckler, my hand is protected, and if somebody gets too close, I've got a spike which I can spike them with. Now, you see exactly the same sort of buckler illustrated in the English edition of Degrassi, which is here. And here is a reproduction of the buckler from Degrassi. Now, fairly obviously, by the time you get to a fully developed English buckler like this, it really is a completely different weapon to this. It's held in a different way, you use it in a completely different way. Um, and in fact, I've had to spend the last nine months really retraining my left hand to stop doing this kind of thing and do things that are appropriate for this weapon. But once you do that, everything Silver says about the buckler fight suddenly makes sense. He talks about the great weight and circumference of it. Well, now it has weight and circumference. Um, he talks about 
not grappling people when they get close, but striking them with the buckler. And again, this is too big to grapple with, but it's obviously designed if somebody gets too close, you strike them with the buckler. Um, and so this combination is what Silver was familiar with. And so this is really that classic Elizabethan combination of sword and buckler. So is it better? Well, putting aside the obvious um, superiority of the English system and just talking about the weapons themselves for a minute, the answer is, meh, not really. Um, sure, it's bigger, so it covers more space, covers more area, so it's hard to get past in that way. And it's got a spike, and who doesn't love a spike? But there's a lot less you can do with it. I can hold it there, um, and probably for not very long, so I'm also gonna hold it here, and really, that's about it. There's not much else I can do with this. Um, not only is it heavy, but having this big spike out the front brings this weight forward and having the edges flare out brings the weight forward. So it's also quite unbalanced in that way. Um, so it doesn't really sit around your hand in a nice balanced way the way a traditional buckler does. And of course, you lose access to all the cool buckler manipulations that you get with the little buckler. However, it is definitely a better buckler to use in conjunction with one of these swords. Okay, as I said before, I've been using the other little round buckler for about 20 years, and it's never been particularly satisfactory, and it never even occurred to me that I was using the wrong buckler the whole time. One of these and one of these makes a lot more sense as a combination. So the next obvious question is, where do I get one? Um, so this one was made for me by uh, my mate Nick Harrison of Redout Forge in New Zealand. Um, it's, the whole thing is tempered spring steel. Um, it didn't come with the spike, that's a repurposed flexi data that I have added myself, so if you want a spike you'll have to do that yourself. But the buckler itself is absolutely beautifully made. This one was made for me by a local Sydney armourer named Adam McKay. Um, this one is mild steel, except for the pike, which is spring steel. Um, and it's again a beautifully manufactured and finished object. Um, Adam doesn't have a web presence per se, but he does have an email, which is down there. So feel free to contact him. Now, I can recommend the work of either of those two gentlemen, but these were, of course, were both bespoke items and costs an appropriate amount of money, so about the same as a sword. Um, if you can't afford that, you're on a budget, or you are trying to equip a whole class full of people, fear not, because I've also had these manufactured. So even after I've equipped Staccata, I will still have a bunch of these left. So if you are interested in getting hold of one of these um, bucklers, or many of them, um, feel free to contact me at the email address I will put down there. So there we have it, the Elizabethan English buckler, a completely different type of weapon to the normal buckler, um, completely redesigned in order to accommodate the basket hilt and back sword. Um, so I hope you found that interesting.